Hello everyone and welcome to Southern Ways with Felicia. I'm so glad to be back. It's been about a month or so since I've been on. Um, I had to push the pause button. We had a sudden unexpected death in our family. Um, so I just thought that I needed to take some time to you know, take care of my family as well as take care of myself. So I'm so glad to be back with you all. Um, this weekend, we are celebrating Mother's Day. To all of you who are mothers, I would like to say Happy Mother's Day to you. And I certainly hope that you are enjoying um, spending time with your children and family and doing some fun activities. Um, here in the Carolinas, uh, it is a nice sunny day. And so I'm looking forward to spending some time with my family outdoors. But before doing so, I wanted to hop on here and just share some things with you in honor and in commemoration of Mother's Day. So growing up as a little girl, uh, one of the memories that I have is on Mother's Day Sunday, um, all the women in our church would wear corsages. Um, this is something that uh, is real big in the South, um, just, you know, those Mother's Day corsages. I'm sure if you're from the South, um, you may uh, remember uh, seeing women in your church wearing corsages. And I have my little basket here with some corsages in here. And one of the corsages that would be worn was red. Um, usually the carnations, um, the, the flowers were carnations. Um, this one is red and you wore a red carnation if your mother was still living. And if your mother was deceased, uh, then you would wear a white carnation. And so I think this tradition still goes on where carnations are, I mean, where corsages are worn. Um, I think now we've kind of moved on to live flowers, um, roses, lilies, orchids, uh, you know, different kinds of flowers. Um, flowers have always been associated with Mother's Day. And I'm just, you know, grateful that my mom, she made those for me. She actually owns a florist. And so she put those together for me so that I could share them with you. So if you have memories of seeing the women in your church wearing a Mother's Day corsage, please um, comment below and share that wonderful story with me, um, you know, I, I love Mother's Day because it, you know, it gives us an opportunity to thank our mothers um, or, or to um, commemorate, you know, our mother if they're no longer with us. I know for my mom, her mom is deceased. And so uh, yesterday when I was by her shop, she was putting together an arrangement to put on her grave site. Um, so we usually go and visit my grandmother's um, grave just out of respect for Mother's Day and to see the beautiful flowers that my mother has put together for her. Now I'd like to share with you just some little tidbits, facts that, um, that I um, learned while preparing for this video that I thought I would share with you. Uh, so the mother of Mother's Day who is the founder is actually a woman by the name of Anna Jarvis. Uh, a couple of years ago, I had an opportunity during Mother's Day to see a video about uh, a documentary about the life of uh, Miss Anna Jarvis. And it is fascinating um, because it tells you, you know, the history of why she found why she founded Mother's Day. And then it moved into how she did not really, really like the commercialization of Mother's Day. So if you, um, Never get an opportunity, Google her or, or um, you know, check your local listings to see if they are going to be, you know, re-showing that documentary. But she um, started a campaign because she felt that there needed to be a special day to celebrate mothers. Um, and her inspiration for Mother's Day was, of course, her own mom. Uh, as a child, uh, Anna had listened to a prayer that her mother um, has said, and it's really stuck with her. And the prayer went this way. It said, I hope that someone sometime will found a Memorial Mother's Day commemorating her for the matchless services she renders to humanity in every field of life. She is entitled to it. So after Miss Anna Jarvis um, own mother passed, um, then that's when she went 
um, went about campaigning for it to be a holiday. And on May 8th of 1914, um, President Woodrow Wilson, he signed a joint resolution and designated the second Sunday in May as Mother's Day. Uh, one of the other things that I found pretty found interesting was that, and it was no, really no surprise, to be honest, is that Mother's Day is actually the third mo most popular holiday after Christmas and Easter. And also that Mother's Day is one of the busiest days for restaurants. 62% um, of us take our mother out to eat. However, in our family, what we normally do is get together um, with my mom and her sisters and we always have a big cookout um, to celebrate them and so it's like all the first cousins come together and it's always a wonderful time because we're able to catch up with each other um, because you know life is so busy so we don't get to see each other a lot and some live out of town so it's like a reunion for us one of the other things that I um, like to do is for Mother's Day I always like to give my mom even though she owns a florist I like to give her roses out of my own garden she always looks forward to that and this is a photograph of my mother and I when I was a toddler and so this is us back in the day you can tell we are rocking the 70s clothing <laughs> so that's one of my cherished photos of my mother and the last thing that I would like to share with you is just, um, if you looked at my video from February in memory of my grandmother, my sweet Lorraine, who, who um, I was honoring her birthday, um, I would like to share with you something that I did uh, for Mother's Day, the following Mother's Day after she passed. I um, gave my mom and her sisters um, a pendant and this is my pendant and I don't know if you will be able to see it but this pendant is actually a lock of my grandmother's hair and then I went my grandmother was an avid gardener so she always had flowers blooming and growing in her yard so I uh, took some of her flowers and pressed them and put them in here. So the hair is actually laying on flowers out of my grandmother's um, garden. And so I made these little keepsakes for, for my mom and her sisters, as well as myself and my two daughters, uh, just so we could always have a piece of uh, mother with us. I called my granny mother and my mom, I call her mama. So again, thank you for watching Southern Ways with Felicia. If you enjoyed um, watching this episode, please give us a thumbs up. We'd really appreciate that. And also comment below if you have childhood memories of seeing these corsages worn by the ladies in your church. I'd love to hear those stories. Um, please, please share us with your friends. Tell them about us. We'd love for them to um, come by and check out what Southern Ways with Felicia is all about. We're also on Instagram. So if you are on the gram, please like our page. Um, and that is Southern Ways with Felicia. Again, thank you. Until next time. Bye bye. And I'll see y'all later.